have been well trained. No, you don't have to Final. carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. There is no threat. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another Star Wars Destiny coverage video from the 2018 World Championships at FFG Headquarters. We are here today watching some footage collected by the Chance Cube. On the left we have Ian S. running Elite Obi-Wan, Elite Maz Kanata, and on the right we have Jacob N. running Elite Boba, Elite Seventh Sister. I'm going to try my best to keep that Seventh Sister straight. Uh, I have been confusing her with Obi-Wan Kenobi. There is a little bit of glare, so uh, I apologize. I will do my best to uh, explain to you what's going on and uh, keeping track of everything that's happening. So, each of these decks, uh, definitely very popular decks, both of them having taken uh, high tier places at uh, the various regional championships, galactic qualifiers, even local tournaments. These decks from top to bottom as far as the competitive sphere goes are doing extremely well and are extremely powerful decks. Uh, but both for different reasons. Both of these decks however do most of their damage with melee or sticks. So we're going to be seeing a whole lot of stick damage coming in through here. So on the Boba F Seventh side, we are running the Baomar Monk Monastery, uh, allowing a care, allowing you to resolve one of your dice showing a modifier. Uh, this is definitely a uh, an important card, especially due to the fact that uh, Boba Seventh usually runs Maul's lightsaber, which has a whole lot of modified damage sides. Being able to resolve those even without a base damage is going to be clutch at times. And then on the other side, on the Obi Maz side, we are seeing Obi, or sorry, the Outer Rim Outpost, my personal favorite, showing, uh, allowing you to gain a resource and draw a card. Uh, Boba Seventh, looking at the Bomar Monastery, uh, definitely considering it. I think you actually might want the shields on this one. Obi Wan and Maz are going to be able to generate shields like crazy, so being able to get just a couple for yourself at the beginning might not be a bad idea, and. Yep, that's what we end up doing. So, uh, may not be counting on that Maul's lightsaber to be able to do a lot of the damage in this particular game. Uh, puts a shield on each of his characters. We get the Viber Knife on Obi-Wan Kenobi right at the beginning. He's trying to get through any shields that may even slightly occur. Oh my goodness, and we have five unblockable damage right in the beginning of the game. <laughs> Gonna go right past those shields. Uh, each of these characters, uh, Seventh Sister has 10 health, Boba Fett having 11 health, so we've got 21 health on Jacob's side, and on Ian's side, we are looking at 20 health. So, in theory, Boba Faz, or sorry, Boba Seventh having the slight health advantage, and then with the additional two shields, but Obi Wan being able to generate his own shields just on the fly each round is definitely something to be aware of and keep track of. Plays down a Force Illusion. Uh, the dice that are showing out there are definitely not going to be affected by that Force Illusion. Uh, five unblockable. Nothing. Uh, looks like he may have been trying to use the Force Illusion. Unfortunately, yeah, not something we can do. Unfortunately, the uh, unblockable damage, the Force Illusion is considered blocking. So, goes right past that Force Illusion. But that Force Solution definitely going to come in handy and uh, definitely played it on the right character being the target uh, of Ian's Obi-Wan. Uh, hopefully being able to take care of that. So, alright, look like we're going through and removing some cards from the Obi-Wan Maz deck using never uh, friends in low places. Getting rid of the easy picking. Uh, Boba Fett and Seven Sister both having very similar damage side and the highest die sides for damage on each of those characters is a two damage side. So easy picking is definitely the right call to be able to get rid of that. So uh, Maz was able to focus Obi-Wan into the three damage and he is able to just throw that right into Seventh Sister. 
uh, no mitigation used on the Boba Seventh side. He decides to force illusion and loses a bait and switch, an ancient lightsaber, and another friends in low places. Uh, it is a loss. Those cards are definitely uh, definitely important cards to be able to have. However, healing three damage or uh, preventing three damage to your character who's already at half health, uh, not a bad choice. Boba rolls out, gets a disrupt and a resource. Now, Boba Fett is interesting because he actually has three damage sides, and that special can get so powerful, especially with those really big cards like Maul's lightsaber. Being able to get the four damage side on the Maul saber and then using Boba's special to do four damage without having to remove the Maul's lightsaber side. So we discard to reroll, we get the damage. It's going to be interesting because uh, Boba Fett's special can actually... Uh, proxy off of your opponent's dice so those uh, obi-wan kenobi three sides while they seem really cool right now could end up being a little bit of a detriment if our boba fett can end up rolling his specials on a consistent basis uh, it looks like ian has claimed the battlefield uh being able to gain a card and or yeah gain a card and gain a resource Reroll on rerolling our Boba Fett and getting some uh, extra damage here. So this is uh, definitely turning into a fun, fun experience there. All right, there we go. So uh, it looks like Ian had not actually claimed the battlefield yet, but he just did. Drew that extra card and gained that resource. So he did not have any mitigation. Uh, he may have been trying to bluff the bluff his way through, trying to make Jacob think that he did have some mitigation. Uh, which is definitely something that can happen in this in this game. Uh, not to the extent some other games are able to do it, but, uh, you know, bluffing is uh, is an important part of many games. Uh, we have a knocked out Maz. Holy cow. That is amazing. First round of the game, and we have a knocked out Maz. Very similar to the other game where uh, we saw the Sabine Ezra, and Ezra got knocked out. Sabine was able to come back and take, take the field, though, so it should be interesting to see if Obi-Wan can still uh, pull this out. Looks like Obi-Wan ended up getting a, uh, all right, so we have Maz's Vault actually was a, was played out, giving both characters three resources at the beginning of the game. That Boba Seventh Sister uh, is definitely going to be loving those extra resources each round. Obi-Wan being able to get a Shoto lightsaber, uh, maybe looking to get some additional shield generation there. Unfortunately, Shoto not working with Vibro Knife. It does not work with any weapon. It has to be a blue weapon when you resolve uh, the ability on Shoto. But then again, Obi-Wan already has an ability to gain a shield, and so he's going to be sitting on two nice and pretty shields. We've got a 14 health Obi-Wan Kenobi versus a 6 health 7 Sister and a 12 health Boba Fett. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a really sweet game to watch. Obi-Wan not quite rolling exactly what he wanted, a couple of shields, a resource, and then a modified damage on the Shoto. So without Maz's ability being able to focus uh, Obi-Wan's die, he does lose a little bit of consistency, but at the same time, he still has got three damage sides, and Ian has a couple of resources, so even if they both roll the paid damage sides, he can easily pay for those without a problem. Even the even the Vibro Knife is showing another resource. Now, if he can roll another modified damage on the Vibro Knife, oh no, nope, we use a. Uh, he doesn't like you to remove one of the Obi Wan dice. So Ian's running a little bit low on base damage sides. Shoto having one, Vibro Knife having two single damage sides. Rerolls the Obi and the Vibro Knife does not hit any of those damage sides. So, Jacob may be feeling a little bit confident about his odds here, his chances. He is sitting on four resources, so if he has the ability to play an upgrade on Boba Fett, uh, I th personally think now, oh, now is the time. So, we're seeing a Vibro Knife on Boba Fett. Vibro Knife versus Vibro Knife. Uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, does this too, but in another Marvel prop or another Disney property, Marvel, uh, there are vibro vibrany somethings. I know what they are. I just don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Uh, this kind of looks like a Black Panther fight right here between a, a couple of uh, vibranium knives here. <laughs> All right. So Boba Fett getting to roll in. Uh, 
Not rolling great. Uh, getting the base damage melee side, which is unblockable. If he can consistently get some really good unblockable damage on that Obi-Wan Kenobi, that's going to be really clutch to be able to bypass the, um, the ridiculous amount of shields that Obi-Wan can generate. Getting Shoto's and then his ability on top of it, uh, Obi-Wan easily creates shields for days, uh, making his uh, health super, super powerful. So we do get one unblockable and then just one into the shields on the Obi-Wan Kenobi character. So Obi-Wan gets a shield just by activating. You can put that shield on any character, but since Obi-Wan's the last one, that's why we're going to see him roll out and get a shield on him every single round. Unless, of course, he's at max shields. Uh, I did see a, an Obi-Wan player uh, at another tournament who kept forgetting about the shield every single round. He still ended up winning the game, but uh, ended up taking a lot of damage that he wouldn't have had to. Uh, remembering your character's triggers is especially important. Um, I personally uh, was running Han Solo, the new Han Solo from the starter set recently and forgot his ability to reroll his dice every single round <laughs> totally spaced it every single time so frustrating sometimes we do have an it binds all things on the boba seven sister side it binds all things is a really good card but it does only work on blue weapons so my anticipation is that we may see some blue weapons come in on the boba seven side double shotos on obi-wan means that he is going to be getting three shields around as soon as he activates no resolving dice, no playing cards. He just straight up gets three shields every round just for breathing. That is amazing. That is an amazing ability. And then uh, for Ian to be able to stack his deck, uh, or design his deck, I mean, in such a way that he's able to get those Shotos, just get shields for days, uh, we're definitely going to see a really interesting game. Now, the other interesting thing about it is when Viberknife resolves with, uh, with other dice, all of the dice it resolves with in the package are unblockable. So as we see right here, Obi-Wan rolls out and rolls a two melee on the Vibro Knife and I believe another two melee on the Shoto. If he can get a base damage on any of his other three dice, all of that damage will be unblockable. So if he even gets a single uh, base damage sides on either the, on, on the Shoto even, just the one damage side, he's going to end up being able to knock out that seventh sister even with the shield on her. Just five unblockable damage straight to the throat. Seven sister rolling in. Not a great showing. All right, so Ian is going to roll in. Let's see if he gets it. He does not get any base damage sides. That is the unfortunate part is Obi-Wan does only have two damage sides, two base damage sides. And then the Shoto only has one. So if we're uh, playing the odds here, uh, it's definitely uh, more often to not get it than to get it. But he's got three dice. The odds of him landing a single melee side at some point, still pretty high. Boba seventh. Uh, man, that feel, feel your anger in his uh, discard pile sure would be nice right now. <laughs> Sure, he might be wishing he was hanging on to that. All right, so he discards a card from Ian's hand. Let's see what card he gets. Truce, not a huge deal. I think uh, I think there are plenty of resources in the game, but sometimes being able to truce into that ambush action is just too good to uh, pass up. Uh, we get a running interference on. Obi one side. Now, running interference after the Erratus says that when you use its ability, you actually have to place it in the set aside zone, which is the same place you put hyperspace jump. Uh, Boba seventh. All right, plays the doubt uh, on the vibro knife to be able to get that damage blockable again, and it worked out perfect for him. Ended up rolling a resource. Ian claims the resource, and he's just sitting there on four resources, and no more slots on Obi-Wan to put more weapons on. Kind of makes you wish you were running the new Grievous from the next set. Who can have four upgrades on him? That's going to be so cool. A lot of people think that, uh, that it's going to be hard to get all the resources to play all those weapons on General Grievous, but I personally think that we're, we're going to see something happen that's going to make it really good. Another plus two on the Shoto lightsaber. Uh, if Obi-Wan hits 
any of his damage sides, uh, Ian's going to be able to knock out that seventh sister pretty quick. Let's see what Jacob ends up doing on the Boba Phasma side. He still has Boba to be able to roll out. He may be waiting uh, to see if he needs to mitigate any of Obi-Wan's dice. Uh, nope, he ends up playing a backup muscle, another way to get unblockable damage to your character. Whew, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be interesting. Now, uh, backup muscle, while it is unblockable, uh, does take three rounds of the game in order to use up all the damage that's on him. So while he is gonna be able to do three unblockable damage to Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's gonna take three rounds to do. So we'll have to see, uh, see how effective it is uh, a lot of players uh, that I've seen and played against uh, use their backup muscle they play it out and they just leave it sitting there and they don't use it for the first round or two and the reason they do that is to kind of lull you into a false sense of security hopefully make you forget that it's even there and then when your character has one or two damage left they suddenly pop that uh, backup muscle on there and say ha ha now you're only one away from damage and it's unblockable which means it's going to pass your shield it's going to pass your force illusion and you're going to be defeated obi-wan kenobi rolls in still not hitting great damage that happens destiny is a card drawing and a dice rolling game and sometimes those dice they just sometimes just can't hit for you we see Seventh Sister roll back out, uh, gets a damage side, a disrupt. Uh, not ideal. Uh, it always kind of feels a little bit painful to me when I roll out a character and I get the disrupt and my opponent has four or five or six resources and you've got a one disrupt. It doesn't always feel great. But one thing I can tell you is that it still hurts. So Ian right now is looking at his hand, he's looking at the resources he has and says, look, I can play any card in my hand that I want to right now. But if he disrupts some of those resources, he can definitely take some of those off the table. We see an heirloom lightsaber being played on Boba Fett. That turns his specials into potential three damage sides now. This is gonna be massive. Obi-Wan Kenobi finally rolling a three for one on the damage so he's got seven damage showing so unless uh, Jacob has some mitigation in his hand or a force illusion or some other form of healing we're definitely gonna see uh, seven sister go down this round I believe now again don't underestimate the value of disrupt being able to take a couple of those resources off the off the board so your opponent can't use them oh he doesn't like you seven sister is still in this game Oh, one disadvantage to these uh, may, these uh, modifier sides. Oh my goodness, look at this. Uh, we've got six modified damage showing on Ian's side. If he can just get that one damage side, then we're going to see some major damage come from uh, Ian's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Unfortunately, without that uh, melee side, it's uh, without that base damage side, those uh, those dice may as well be blank. Uh, this is a moment where I wonder if you're in and you're wondering, maybe that uh, Bomar Monk Monastery might be the way to go after all. You should uh, sure use the ability to uh, resolve some of these modified damage sides. Obviously still not, still probably not the best call. He's able to close quarters assault, getting rid of Jacob's ability to reroll his dice. So. Whatever Boba rolls in right now, that is what he's got. Now, on top of being able to get the three resources each round for Jacob, he has also got that It Binds All Things. So he has a uh, virtual four damage, uh, four resources each round to be able to use in whatever way he sees fit. All right. Ian, making use of those modify size, has a guard, removes two of Jacob's dice, removing, uh, I think, all of the damage sides that are available to Jacob. Jacob has no ability to reroll, so we're going to have to see what he ends up deciding to do. He's got some shields showing, which definitely aren't bad against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, some of that disrupt and a discard side. So he takes the shields, trying to prevent any future damage. So if Obi-Wan is able to get that off oh 
It looks like Ian was also out of cards. I thought he was kind of holding them in his hand down there. Uh, so Ian claims, gets a resource, draws a card. Uh, the card is discarded by Jacob because he's also out of cards and has to has to just deal with what he's got. Obi-Wan Kenobi having three damage on him. Uh, Seventh Sister and Boba not taking any damage at all during these last rounds. Uh, just the initial uh, five damage from that Obi-Wan die and Viber Knife is all the damage that we've seen go through onto a character. Uh, the only damage that Obi-Wan has been able to do onto a character this round, or this game. Interestingly enough, Obi-Wan, already having all the shields possible, uses the Shota's ability to remove the shields from his opponent. This is actually something that a lot, not a lot of people always... Uh, sorry, let me rephrase. Not everyone remembers that Shoto can actually remove your opponent's shields as well as give yourself shields. Um, so using it to great effect to be able to essentially remove two damage from the Boba 7th side of the board uh, just by activating. Unfortunately, the third shield he would get from Obi-Wan's static ability is not going to be able to be put on because he already is at full shields, which is three. There are some cards that can allow you to get additional shields. Uh, Mandalorian armor and defensive teachings being a couple of those cards, one being an upgrade, the other a support. So we see uh, Boba Fett roll in and gets a lot of resources uh, and very little damage. Uh, resources though, both of these players, uh, Ian sitting there with seven resources, those, uh, those wonderful altar, alternate tokens, and then Jacob over here showing six resources, uh, the standard FFG resource tokens. Oh wow, uh, these neither of these players are uh, neither of these players are hurting for money at all. They can pretty much play whatever they feel like. Uh, Obi Wan re-rolling, getting it looks like six total damage, and with that Viber knife in the mix, it is all unblockable. Not that Seventh Sister has any shields right now, but just the just the idea that it's unblockable. That uh, that six damage could be going on to Boba Fett right now, uh, and putting him in threat of being knocked out. So, kind of a big deal. Jacob is still deciding what to do, seeing what his options are. Oh, this is going to be nuts. This is going to be a, a, a really big deal here. If he has removal, I think he wants to try to use it now. He does have dice on the board, uh, but I think he's already used both of his. Uh, he doesn't like you. Cards. All right, so we see the damage. Five unblockable damage onto the seventh sister, knocking her out of the game. She did not have a chance to respond. Uh, we knew it was going to happen, but now we have to say goodbye to our wonderful sister, seventh sister. Boba Fett now standing alone against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, we've seen this battle a little bit before. Uh, however, the battle that we saw before in this particular case wasn't entirely fair because Boba was in a spaceship and blowing the crud out of Obi-Wan on a platform while Obi-Wan tried to take out his dad. I think he's holding a little bit of a grudge against him for that. But let's see uh, what he's able to do against the old Jedi. Jedi General. A second backup muscle. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have four damage in backup muscles being able to go on to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Still not enough to defeat the character, but enough to cause, uh, cause some annoyance, that's for sure. Now, there is an additional trick that I have seen some people do is try to recur that, uh, uh, that backup muscle, but it's kind of complicated and doesn't always work. So once the damage on those backup muscles are gone, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's all the damage they're going to do for the round. So if we count that up with the three extra damage, that'll only put Obi-Wan at eight damage. So we need to see four damage go through those shields onto Obi-Wan Kenobi before he's in lethal range. And then with the additional playing of that ancient lightsaber, uh, Ian is trying to make sure that he does not have a problem getting that damage taking it off of his character. Now, oh. Hasty exit to remove a damage. He removes the unblockable part of the Viber Knife. The Viber Knife along with the Shoto were going to be uh, being some extra 
unblockable damage. But now the damage is completely blockable, leaving those shields on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Let's see what Jacob is able to do. I think he can remove all the shields. I think it is a plus two there on the melee side. And then we have a one resource on Boba Fett. If he does have the bait and switch, he could bait and switch into the... Nope, he discards a force illusion to reroll a couple of those dice. He does get extra damage. We are looking at two, three, four damage coming from Boba Fett, whittling away that Obi-Wan Kenobi character. And there's the hyperspace jump. So none of that damage able to actually be done. Uh, it happens, guys. <clears throat> hyperspace jump, a pretty valuable card. Uh, it doesn't look like Ian wants to change the battlefield. Um, not sure if I would. Uh, Ian could definitely have used it a couple of times, but I think he likes sticking with, uh, with the extra resource and drawing a card. While it can be very powerful in the beginning of the game when we have these characters, uh, sorry, not these characters, these players uh, rolling in seven or eight resources uh, for the round, uh, gaining that extra resource and drawing a card, not as much of a benefit as it used to be. Boba Fett, uh, having claimed the battlefield, rolls in. Let's see what he can do to Obi-Wan Kenobi this time. All right, we are showing... Uh, three out of five dice showing damage. He does get an extra shield from the Shoto lightsaber. So each of these characters have three shields. Uh, we're going to see an Obi-Wan Obi Kenobi play in overconfidence. He's still deciding which dice he wants to do. He chooses the Boba Fett die and the Shoto lightsaber die. Now Boba Fett special does count as a zero. So if he ends up hitting that, it's not going to be as fun. All right. Shoto gets removed. Uh, Boba Fett's die stays on with the disrupt. Once again, Disrupt, not exactly a very powerful uh, side of the die in this, in this particular game. Uh, being able to get a resource each round, each of, these each of these players having so many resources, that one Disrupt just not as impactful as the damage. So he does uh, activate one of the backup muscles to get that extra unblockable damage on Obi-Wan Kenobi. So in total, between the shields and... Uh, and the damage currently on Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, we have nine damage in total that needs to be done. Now, if he can get that unblockable damage uh, to go through onto Obi-Wan Kenobi, then he's only got to do six. I mean, we've still got two on those backup muscles, so all he needs is four unblockable damage. So if he can get that uh, Vibro Knife to uh, the plus one or plus two modified, and then if he can get that Heirloom Lightsaber to the two or the three, uh, we're, looking at a, we're looking at an unblockable destruction of Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's going to have to heal. So he does use the other backup muscle to get that extra damage on. Now the question is do you save that last backup muscle to try to do a, uh, a claim and kill or what? Obi-Wan Kenobi rolling into some decent damage. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think we're looking at seven or eight damage there on three dice. Woo. That's pretty powerful. But once again, Jacobs can easily pull this out with uh, just the right rolls on, on the heirloom. He still has both of Boba's specials out there. If he can get the heirloom to the three and get the Boba Fett specials, you're looking at nine damage. It's not unblockable, but nine damage is a dead Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're there. We're there. That's all you got to do. You just got to hit the one and six on three different dice, right? So that's like three out of six, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. I can do real math sometimes all right so it looks like we hidden motive uh looks like he said melee obi-wan kenobi not hitting the melee side hitting the shield side so the die stays in uh oh my goodness concentrate Woo! that is a massive play so with as many resources as ian has uh ian uses concentrate uh, which says, uh, turn a die to one of your dice to any side. You can pay an additional resource to turn another die to any side. So he does pay the two resources to turn both of Obi-Wan Kenobi's dice to three damage sides. Uh, so we are looking at three, six, nine, ten, or eleven damage, which 
actually does not kill Boba Fett. Barely. Barely doesn't kill him. He is left alive by that one dinky little shield sticking on him. See? Shields are important, guys. Shields are good. Shields are wonderful. Shields are my friend. This commercial brought to you by Shields. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Jacob is really trying to figure out what he wants to do. I don't know if he has any mitigation. He's really not looking at his cards. Yep, sure enough, no mitigation. Does the two damage to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi pulling. Let's see, what do we got here? Nine, so it was ten, so the Shoto must have been showing a one. It's a little bit hard to tell uh, from this far away. I should probably get a little closer to my screen. <laughs> Just kidding. So it was a one damage. So 10 damage going onto Boba, minus the one shield. So Boba has two health left. Boba discards and it binds all things and he is trying to get that damage. Come on, baby, you can do it. He does not get it. All right, so what are we looking for the Boba Fett player, Boba Fett player to get? Obi-Wan Kenobi right now has one shield and seven damage, meaning he needs six damage on his character to be able to be defeated. However, he just changed that, healed two damage, so now we need eight damage on Obi-Wan Kenobi in order to knock him out of the game. We have one damage on the backup muscle, ready to go for that final round, and it is unblockable. Can Boba Fett get him down far enough this round? He absolutely can. Unfortunately, it looks like he didn't get the roll on that uh, ancient lightsaber, or the heirloom lightsaber, I apologize. Ooh, hidden motive um, on the Viber Knife. But the Vibronife knows the blank. Uh, I'm pretty sure he chose melee. Vibronife rolls the blank. It gets to stay in the field. Uh, is Jacob going to go for the kill this round? Or is he going to try to claim the battlefield and try to get out early in the next round? The only problem is Obi-Wan is going to end up back at full shields again next round. Uh, yep, so he discards the Vibro Cutlass. Rolls the Vibronife and the Heirloom. And he gets some damage. Alrighty then, now we're talking. So that's a minimum of five damage. I can't quite tell if the heirloom is showing a two or a three, but this is, this is massive. So let's see, what does Ian got? Does he got something? He does not. He just claims the resource on the Shoto lightsaber. Jacob, what's the order you do this in? I believe that you do the Boba Fett special first because the other dice can be resolved in tandem. They can be resolved together. Now, you're not gonna claim the battlefield if that's the case, which means that Obi-Wan can roll in. If it is a two damage showing on the heirloom lightsaber, then it is a high possibility that's five damage. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we've got Obi-Wan sitting at eight damage at the end of this. Not quite enough to knock him out with the backup muscle. All right, so let's see, one, two, three. Oh, one, two. All right, so Heirloom is showing a two. Ian claims, uh, telegraphing that he absolutely does have not, does, sorry, does have not any removal. Hmm, no removal does Ian have. <laughs> sorry, I, I can't do that voice. All right, so back to reality. Heirloom showing the two, Vibro Knife showing the one. We got three damage showing. Is Jacob considering re-rolling to try and get that? Yep, okay. He may have been considering it, but decided that he was going to go ahead and do the damage, which uh, my calculations before were a little off. So Obi-Wan now sitting at nine damage with the three shields he can get at the beginning of the next round. That means he has a total of six damage ready to go. Backup muscle being able to take that down by one. So uh, leaving five damage for Jacob to do in the beginning of the next round. Jacob, however, I'm sure is sweating just a little bit. Oh, unless he of course has an ancient lightsaber to play on Boba. He overwrites the Viber Knife to do it and to heal two damage. Boba Fett coming back. Back up to four damage left. Uh, Obi-Wan and Boba, both really close to being knocked out of this competition. Both of them with Shoto lightsabers to get some additional shields. So Obi-Wan's gonna roll out. Now Boba could use the Shoto to remove a shield off of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And sure enough, Obi-Wan does take all three shields to himself. 
Obi-Wan needing six damage to be knocked out of the game. He does not roll any damage on his dice. So Boba Fett can breathe easy for another half a second. I'm really excited for this. I did not see this particular game, so I'm really, for some reason, I'm really invested in how this comes out. This is really cool. <laughs> for those of you who have stuck around this long, thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, definitely uh, like and subscribe and do all the fun things for the Chance Cube. Show them your support and let them know that we want them to keep doing this in future competitions and, uh, and special events like Worlds. All right. So let's see. Does Boba remove the shield from Obi-Wan? I think, I think that's what he's talking about. He may be thinking about whether how to do that. Nope, he takes the shield for himself. So Boba Fett sitting at five health left, including his shields. Obi-Wan Kenobi sitting at six health left, including his shields. Obi-Wan is going to be able to regenerate those shields each round. So, oh my goodness, there it is. Intimidate. All of those shields are gone. We, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is in death throws right now. Oh, okay. Oh, he had the shields showing on his dice, so he ended up resolving those. Very interesting. I think he knew that he was dead. That heirloom may be showing a three. It's a little bit hard to tell. My eyes are not what they used to be. I'm, I'm super old now. I am 32 years old. Can you believe it? 32 years old. I am a fogey. Just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am old when it comes to card games, though. We roll out. We get the Boba Fett special, a disrupt, and a modified. That is it. Unless he can do some things, it looks like he does. Uh, he does use the ancient lightsaber on Obi Wan Kenobi to heal. You know, I uh, ooh, I don't know if I saw the uh, ancient lightsaber die out there. I may have missed it. I don't think that I saw the ancient lightsaber die out though. Well, he ended up using it to heal before he resolved uh, would have resolved it anyway. Another ancient lightsaber going on Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh man, this is just uh, going nuts. Whew. Oh man, this is a crazy, crazy, crazy game. Obi-Wan Kenobi just trying to get the healing off, just surviving round around, being able to get those shields off of him. Uh, Boba Fett doing his darndest to try to take this guy out. So he does deal uh, the damage. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four, and then heals two. Okay, so he got the four, and then healed. So Obi Wan Kenobi back, uh, backup muscle hitting him for the extra to get him to ten. If Boba Fett can reroll into any damage, any of his damage sides, well, except the special, he he couldn't kill him with the special. But if he rolls the range or the melee, he's got this. He's got this. There's no more healing for Obi Wan Kenobi this round. Uh, he has not played a Force Illusion. I don't know if he even has it in hand. We'll have to see. I do not see it. I think I saw a running interference. But I'm not sure. Okay, so he discards to reroll. He gets the one in six for the extra damage. Boba Fett, though, not super worried about the card. Uh, so his question is, do I play any removal in my hand or do I discard and try to hit that Boba Fett? Do I try to hit that Boba Fett damage? Boba Fett, the Boba Fett right now has a two in six chance of hitting that damage. One in three. Come on. What do you do? Very thought-provoking question. Because if Obi-Wan lasts another round, that's another three shields you got to deal with. But if you can knock him out right now, that's the game, man. The question is, if Ian has removal in his hand, he's got the resources for it. If he's got the removal in his hand, then... Uh, then discarding to reroll may be uh, maybe a bad move. Okay, so Jacob, a little bit worried about removal, ends up claiming. <clears throat> All right, so I think we went to time, and I think we're going to go to damage dealt. All right, All right, so what was the damage dealt on that? Uh, seventh sister was dead. Oh, but it didn't matter. He discarded to reroll and killed Obi Wan Kenobi. Jacob N takes it with Boba Fett, uh, Boba Seventh, and uh, Ian uh, having to mark that that little mark on his uh, mark an L on the sheet. Wow, what an amazing uh, time! So if because it had gone to time, if he hadn't discarded to reroll and get that Boba Fett uh, damage dice. 
Oh, let's see what happened. Oh, you know what? I think, I think Jacob claimed. So uh, total, we had 18 damage done on uh, by the Boba 7th. And then on the obi Maz side, we had a uh, 10, 18, and then claimed the battlefield. So I think Jacob did win that. Sorry, I thought I, I forgot that he had claimed. Wow, crazy game. Crazy, crazy game. Uh, 18 damage on both sides. The winner comes down to cards in hand and deck. And in that regards, it looks like Ian actually had more cards in, in his deck and hand. So Ian is confirmed the winner of this particular round. Had to actually uh, pause that for a second and go back. But yep, Ian took it. Uh, congratulations to both of these players for being able to play in the World Championships. And thank you guys for listening and watching. And we'll catch you in round six. Bye.